So what's going on guys, kids here and welcome back to a brand new video. For today I will show you the best Walby build guide in the first descendant. So for this build I will show you what weapons and modules you want to get. Then I will explain every single skill and show you the best reactor stats and external components. And then lastly we will take a closer look at the gameplay. So you would be able to get the best results and highest damage possible and much more. So then let's move over to the Valby build. She is a consistent DPS dealer who moves around freely through her water arch. We will mainly use Valby skills to afflict the laundry status on as many enemies as possible. And this will pay off with a huge damage buff when we use our laundry bomb skill, which will give us up to 200% more damage if you afflicted 8 or more enemies with the laundry. Another important thing to note is our passive skill, which will cost 30% less mana whenever she is standing in the water, including the water pools created by her skills. So try to keep this in mind when positioning Valby, as standing on water as much as possible will make it a lot easier to manage the mana cost in combat. So now let's take a look at our skills. The first passive skill is the water intake, which will do that when using skills while standing on the water, we will consume less mana. Then our first active skill is the bubble bullet, that bounces a bubble bullet forward to create a small puddle, Enemies in that small puddle take continuous damage and are inflicted with laundry. Then the second one is the plop plop skill that creates a large puddle where she is standing and then dives in. Valby then pops out at a selected location in the large puddle. Enemies in this puddle take continuous damage and are inflicted with the laundry. Then the cleanup skill will make the Valby become liquefied. When liquefied she cannot take her feet off the ground or use skills but she can move through the enemies and her movement speed and defenses increase. When moving while liquefied, she creates a path of water that deals continuous damage to the enemies and afflicts laundry. And finally we have the laundry bomb skill that changes the equipped weapon to the laundry launcher. When the launcher is fired, a laundry bomb is created, pulling in the enemies inflicted with the laundry and dealing continuous damage. And by the way, each time I said laundry, it is basically a unique skill effect to the Valby character that with each stack reduces the enemy's electric and chill resistance by 20 to 30%. Then now let's take a look at our build modules. Your module capacity cost limits how many modules you can equip, and they can be upgraded as you level up your character. Different modules have different capacity costs, which generally depend on how powerful the module is. This is a balancing system to prevent the players from only equipping the strongest modules and having a totally overpowered character. But it's important to know that when equipping modules on this build, make sure that as many modules as possible are in a slot with a matching icon. This will give you a 50% discount on the module capacity cost. So here we have the best modules for your leveling build. You should be able to get this leveling setup by approximately level 25 to 30. This is a good base setup to have before preparing to farm the max level setup. So we want to get the technician, which increases our skill power modifier, then skill extension that improves our skill duration, then skill range mastery, which makes our skill critical hit damage increased, along with a slight increase to the skill effect range, then the shock punch, which turns your sub attack into a shock punch. Equipping a sub attack module increases the max module capacity as well, then the nimble fingers, which reduces your skill cooldowns, then increased HP, which improves your max HP, then skill extensions, which improves your skill effect range, then increased shield, which improves your max shields, and finally increased defenses, that of course increase your defense. And just before we move on to the endgame setup, let me quickly explain why are some skill modules empty, like here for example. So basically, this slot modifies our skills, but the problem is that all the modified variants are worse for our build than the original. Therefore, we leave this slot empty, because there's not a single modifier in that slot, which could help our build. So it doesn't really matter what we do in the empty spaces. And after that is done, now we are ready for our max level module setup. So for the endgame build, I recommend to use the technician, which increases our skill power modifier. Then the skill extension, which improves our skill duration. Then technique manual, which makes that if we land the skill attack, it will deal portion of our max HP as additional damage to the target, but it has an 8 second cooldown per target. Then HP concentration, which improves your max HP and critical hit rate. Then skill range mastery, which increases the skill critical hit damage along with a slight increase to the skill effect range. 
then Shark Punch, which turns your sub attack into a Shark Punch. Equipping a sub attack module increases the module capacity. Then Nimble Fingers, which reduces your skill cooldowns. Then increased HP, which improves your max HP. Then the skill extension, that improves your skill effect range. Then increased shield, which improves your max shields. And finally increased defenses, which increase your defense. And then finally, let's take a look at the best stats and weapons that we should use. So, for our build, the Thunder Cage Submachine Gun is the ultimate weapon. This firearm emits an electric shockwave that creates the appearance of the thunder being directed at the enemy. When defeating an enemy, the defeated enemy has a set chance to discharge the electric shockwave that deals additional damage to the nearby enemies. This is a very high DPS weapon with a quick fire rate, which augments her already strong damage. And then for our weapon mods, here are the best ones, like the Hakai, Reload Concentration, Rifling Reinforcement, Concentrate Support Ammo, Electric Conductor, Action and Reaction, Marksman, Weak Point Control, Weak Point Sight and Fire Red Up. Then second of all, we have the Nazestra's Devotion, which is a hand cannon that is great as a secondary weapon. It works especially well if you are good at aiming, and are confident at hitting enemy weak points. Hitting an enemy's weak point with this will reduce their defense by 30% for 3 seconds which indirectly buffs the damage of all of your attacks, and a carefully aimed shot from the Nazarstress Devotion makes this weapon amazing for single target boss fights. And lastly, another great secondary weapon that can help to buff our damage if you hit the enemy weak points is the Afterglow Sword, Sniper Rifle. By hitting an enemy's weak point, it will inflict dead propagation, improving the weak point damage by 5% per stack. You can also get the extra critical hit rate, when hitting commanders and other elite enemies with this weapon. And then last but not the least, we need to quickly look into the best reactor stats. So your reactor is very important item, that determines your skill damage and can also include extra modifiers, that buff certain aspects of your build. The better your reactor is, the more damage your skills will deal to enemies. I recommend prioritizing using reactor, with a high skill power and a sub attack power. Secondary, look out for reactor, that buffs dimensions and or fusion skills, as most of the Volby skills will fall into these categories. After that, look out for reactors with a boost to your critical hit damage rate, which will improve the amount of damage dealt when you land a critical hit. Also look out for optimization condition that you can easily fulfill. For example, we have reactor that requires an equipped sniper rifle to meet the optimization condition. Meeting the condition increases the skill power of your reactor, so it's very important to meet this whenever possible. Our Lepix attribute is non-attribute and her skills use fashion and dimensions, which means that you want to pick a reactor with the materialized mixture, which boosts the non-attribute and fashion type, or the materialized face, which also boosts the non-attribute and dimension type. Because our build focuses on damage with the plop plop and laundry skills, Therefore, we want to select the materialized phase reactor. However, any other reactor will do, until you have a proper version of the best one. And finally, we have the external components. With your external components, you will be somewhat subject to RNG, at least until you've played the game for long enough, to find basically every single possible combination with a good stat roll. For this build, I generally recommend to get components with stats in max shields, max HP, HP recovery and defense. And that's about it. So with that said, I really do appreciate everyone for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or suggestions, then feel free to leave your comments in the comment section down below. And while you're doing that, please click like, subscribe and enable that notification bell. So this way you could support the channel and not miss any more amazing content. With that said, you have an amazing day and I will see you in the next one. So take it easy. Peace.